Morning, brothers and sisters. This morning, we are very honoured and glad to have a guest speaker. I will not be uh, preaching today. Our preacher for this morning is uh, Bishop Dr. Lau Hui Ming. He is from uh, Bishop from Sarawak, East Malaysia Methodist Chinese Annual Conference, and uh, he is uh, here uh, this past few days until tomorrow attending the eighth. Mission Conference of the World Federation of Chinese Methodist Church. He represents uh, Sarawak as head of churches to be here in our missions conference. And I know Bishop Lau for many years. Uh, we have been serving uh, together in promoting disciples, Bible study programs, and he is a key instrument that God uses in that region, in Sarawak, in the past few decades in promoting. And uh, we spent years uh, uh, doing training together. He's a uh, trainer of Disciple Bible Studies. And now that God has given him a greater role to lead the whole annual conference, I believe that it is in his blood and in his passion to uh, lead the whole annual conference into disciple making. And so without further ado, I would like to uh, have us welcome Bishop Dr. Lau to share God's word with us. Good morning, brothers and sisters uh, here in, uh, wow, <laughs> I'm so glad and honoured to be here and I'm humbled by the way uh, Reverend Dr. Niem uh, introduced me to you. Uh, I'm so glad, uh, as I said, and I want to bring greetings uh, from brothers and sisters uh, in Sarawak uh, and uh, I pray that we can worship the Lord together. Uh, we praise God that no matter where we come from and no matter how different our backgrounds, maybe the Word of God is always the lamp of our feet, the light of our path ahead. You know, as a pastor for almost 30 years now, uh, one of the most fulfilling ministries is to be able to listen and to comfort the pains of people, uh, of those who are suffering and that includes the pastors. And now that I'm uh, being chosen in this to this position, one of my major concerns is to minister to the well-being of my fellow pastors, uh, amounting to about 220 uh, pastors in Sarawak. As pastors, uh, we are called to bring healing and comfort. But you know what? To be effective healer and dispenser of God's grace, the pastors ourselves, as pastors ourselves, we need uh, to first experience the restoring and healing love of God. And if you remember us, uh, please pray for us uh, that we can be um, instruments of God's grace uh, to the flock that God has entrusted us to. Come, let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we now turn open the Bible, we want to turn our hearts to you. And as we turn our attention to the pulpit, we want to set our eyes on you, day and night, now and tomorrow. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. People of God, uh, you might be wondering if God ever cared about you, especially when, uh, when we are crying or when we are hurting badly. Uh, the, uh, the, the theme that I'm going to share with you today is God knows uh, and Sometimes we wonder really, really uh, whether uh, God understands us, isn't it? Uh, does God know and understand that I'm going, uh, what I'm going through? 
Uh, does God know and actually care about uh, what I'm going through? Let me share with you the first example. You know, when King Hezekiah in the Old Testament, uh, when he was sick and almost to the point of death, he cried out to God. And Hezekiah uh, wept and pleaded for his life. And the Bible tells us that God saw his tears and actually added more years to his life. Let me show you this verse um, in the Old Testament, 2 Kings 20, verse 5. The Bible says, Go back and tell Hezekiah, the ruler of my people, this is what the Lord, the God of your father David, says. I have heard your prayer and seen your tears. I will heal you. You know, even now when I read this verse, I, you know, goes bum, you know. It's so comforting that someone will say to us, I have heard your prayer and seen your tears. How many of us have the privilege of someone saying that to us? Well, if there hasn't been anyone this morning, I want to introduce this to you, that God is always there for us. When you are hurting, when you are crying, when you are feeling down, or can't even find the strength to make an extra step forward, God is saying this to you, I have heard your prayer and seen your tears. Another example is uh, King David, based on Psalm 56 that we have just heard our sister read just now. At the time of this psalm, David was trying all ways and means to escape from King Saul, who tried to kill him. And you know why King Saul wanted to kill him? Because he heard that David uh, is going to be the next king. And so he you know, as human, he just couldn't take it, all right? So he wanted to go after him and kill him. But in the course of running away from King Saul, David was actually caught by another enemy, and that's the Philistines. That's too bad, isn't it? Um, and so I want to uh, bring to you the first point uh, today, and that is let your... Uh, tears, let our tears draw us even closer to God, not farther from God. You know, many times when we, when we cry, when we are faced with challenges, we, we stray away from God, not nearer to God. Let me uh, share with you one story and then you understand what I'm saying. When Xiaoming was asleep, the loud clashing sound of the thunder and the flashing lightning awakened him. And so in fear, he ran to his parents' room. And so daddy, uh, his father, uh, carried Xiaoming back to his room and actually stayed with Xiaoming. After a short while, Xiaoming fell asleep again. I think we are able to understand that, isn't it? Imagine the kind of scenario. I mean, this is so common in our, in our daily living. Uh, and so the question is this, what made Xiaoming to fall asleep again? Was he not so full of fear just a quick moment ago? Could it be that the sound of thunder and the lightning has stopped? No, they did not stop. The only difference now was that Xiaoming's father is there by his side. You know, uh, in fear, Xiaoming ran to his father. And now Xiaoming's father was by his side. And so he fell asleep again. That's the picture I want you to catch and, and stole in a, a permanent memory. And so in the same way, let our tears and our fears push us 
closer to Christ. Let them draw us towards God and trust and enable us to trust in God's promises even more. Our tears and fears can increase our faith in the Lord if we let them. And just as David was in misery, his faith in God became his driving force to press on and move forward. And he declared that in Psalm 53, verse 3. He says this, When I am afraid, I put my trust in you. And that's uh, the kind of faith declaration that we need to make every now and then, every moment in our lives. When I am afraid, I put my trust in God. What about you? When David faced the bottleneck in his life journey, when he found himself so lost in his life direction, he held on to the Word of God and depended on God. God's Word is trustworthy. His promises are true. And when he was faced with difficulties of all kinds and felt so helpless, he, closed, uh, he chose to trust God completely. Uh, you know, in verse 9, it says this, My enemies will turn back, you know, run away. When I cry out to you for help, I know that God is on my side. God is faithful. He will always be there. You know, today, the color of the liturgical cloth of our church calendar has changed to white. And... Uh, 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 as the service began just now, we were told that today is uh, Holy Trinity Sunday. And do you notice the symbol in the front here? There is two uh, Greek alphabet, and that is Alpha and Omega, and the cross in the center. Do you understand what it means? Alpha is actually the first letter alphabet, uh, and then Omega is the last alphabet. And what does it mean? And what has that got to do with my faith? I translated that uh, into Hokkien for my congregation back in Kuching. I say it means that our God is a God who is bao tao ka bao bui. And that means he has to be faithful. He has to be, uh, you know, he cannot run away. He got to you know, uh, uh, jaga the front and also, uh, you know, look after the behind. Uh, and he got to be with us all the time. And that means he is able, uh, and that means he is mighty. If, if he is powerless, he cannot be bao tao ka bao bui, diu bo. And he got to be with us all the time, or else he cannot be bao tao ka bao bui. Uh, God is faithful to His people. He is on our side. And since God is for us, we need not fear. We need not fear the events of our life. We need not fear man and, de and be defeated by events in life. And verse 11 says this, In God I trust. I am not afraid. What can mere man do to me? All right? And so, brothers and sisters, whenever uh, we are perplexed, let us put our trust in God by resting fully in God's faithfulness, which is expressed vividly in verse 8. And so I want to uh, focus on verse 8 also this morning. And, and to me, that is one of the uh, very uh, key verses uh, in this uh, psalm. Verse 8 says this. Let me read to you in this uh, version of the Bible. You have kept count of my misery, all right, and put my tears in your bottle, and are they not recorded in your book? If you can see, can you uh, read that together with me, together? You keep track of my misery, put my tears in your leather container. Are they not recorded in your scroll? The first one, I want to uh, suggest this to you, that God understands. Uh, and the first part of the verse says, 
you have kept count, you have, keep, you have kept track uh, of my misery. All right? Um, it is not by default that everyone we share our hearts with would understand us. Am I right? Yeah, not everyone would understand. If you find one who understands you, uh, you, better, you better treasure him or her. Sometimes instead of empathizing with us, they may even reply us with words that are sarcastic and hurting. They may say things like, Aya, you are too sensitive la. Aya, bo ane kong tai ji la. Aya, you are maybe neurotic. Uh, why, why are you so negative? You know, things like that may just uh, come in, uh, you know, uh, to us when we share our hearts to him or her. One time, my wife uh, went to see a medical doctor for some discomfort in the body. Uh, for some reason, after some time of examination, the doctor could not be certain of the cause. Or maybe he wasn't having a good mood that day. Uh, and so he uttered some very unwise words to my wife. Uh, he said this to my wife. He said, are you pretending to be unwell? Are you? He said, are you pretending? Are you pretending to be unwell? Because he could not find anything wrong, you know. Uh, but my wife said, I'm so unwell. And so from that day on, uh, my wife never wanted to see that same daughter again. Uh, yeah. uh, but, you know, my point is this. Our God understands our struggles and pains. Even when it seems to be silent and quiet, after all the prayers, it doesn't mean that God is not working. All right? God understands and He hears our prayers. Number two, um, God cares, all right? Uh, and the Bible says, you put my tears in your bottle. We have all cried, all right? And maybe still crying. But when you cry, have you ever put a bottle in your, uh, below your eye and collect your tear? Chi singer, am I? No, we, we, don't, we don't do things like that. Um, well, of course, this is exaggerating, all right? This is exaggerated language. But the point is that the psalmist is trying to communicate. Uh, what the, uh, uh, the idea that the psalmist is trying to communicate here is that God is serious when, it, when he says he cares. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, uh, God is serious. Not just say, say like that, you know. Uh, he is serious when he says he cares. He will do it and he mean it. That's the point. Sometimes we hear a desperate person saying, I have cried and cried and cried until my tears are dried up. But still, no one seems to be bothered to care about me. And that's very sad. But God cares and he mean it. He is concerned about you and me to the point of collecting every single drop of tear. He sees and he touches every drop of our tears. And it means that he, uh, he sees and he knows and he cares and he touches every bit of our pain. That's the point. And so, don't give up. Don't get disappointed. Even if you have been praying for the same thing after years of, and years, keep praying until something happens, knowing that God does care because He understands. But not only that, the last point is God delivers why? You see, you look at the last part of the, of the verse. Are they not recorded in your book? And what does it mean? 
You know, one of the obvious differences between good leader and a mama day leader, meaning mediocre leader, average leader, all right, is how they listen to the pleads of his people. In, you know, in the old days, uh, uh, that good leader will take out from his pocket a small notebook. Back in my, my, uh, my young days, uh, that, that, uh, that little notebook is uh, the 555, the triple five. I don't know whether you remember that or not. You know, that triple five notebook, all right? But for people of, the, of, of today, it will be our smartphone. We take out our smartphone and uh, tap the uh, notes. Uh, but whatever, whatever it is, it means that after we listen to people's pleas, we will take out our notebook uh, or our smartphone and then we will jot down every request, every need. Jotting down is important so that he will not forget, he will not overlook. Jotting down is important so that he will not forget. Jotting down is important uh, because it is also a determination to bring about a solution. Not just hear and listen, but you want to do something about it. All right? Jotting down uh, is important. And the Bible say, God jot down uh, every needs of ours. And so when he, uh, when that good leader reached his office, he will discuss with his team for the needed actions to be delivered. And so God not just understands, not just care, but also deliver. God allows us to go through uh, trials to refine our faith uh, like gold so that we may shine like Christ. As we may know, when gold is refined, the refiner doesn't remove it from the heat until he can see the reflection of his own face in the gold. And so in the same way, brothers and sisters, God wants to see his image reflected in us. So he allowed trials and challenges not to weaken our faith, but to make it stronger until the day his reflection is clearly seen in us. And so please, please, let God make you better, not bitter in the pain. I have three children Linda and Joanne, and then the youngest is Justine. Uh, being, uh, 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 many years ago, uh, on a Sunday morning, after the second worship service, uh, I went home, and Justine was around three years old then. Uh, he met me as I arrived, and, and he told me that the sisters were in conflicts. Uh, and when I reached uh, their room, I saw Joanne was crying, and after I get myself changed, I went over to their room, trying to reconcile them. But before I could do anything, Justin pointed his sister, Joanne, uh, who, was, who was crying, to the Jesus picture hung on the wall on, uh, with, one, with one hand. And then with the other hand, he touches her head and rubs all right. So one hand point, pointing to Jesus' picture, another hand to the crying sister's head, and then he says this, it's okay, God knows. And so I want to end my sharing today with that, God knows. Whatever you are going through, look at Jesus, for he knows and he understands, and he will deliver. If you are overwhelmed today by any sickness, any challenge, or even a situation like COVID-19, I invite you to put your trust in Christ, for he, he knows and he sees your tears. God bless you all.